The infamous knockout. Probably what comes to mind every time you're waiting to watch the latest UFC event, what any professional fighter hopes for, or fears if they happen to be on the wrong end of a punch. But your first association with that term probably overlooks the biggest question, what actually happens in a knockout? Behind every knockout that keeps the pay-per-views rolling in, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes. So what is a knockout, and what does that mean for the human body? To answer this, let's first look at the brain. A knockout is defined as a blow that renders the opponent unconscious, not all that useful until we look at unconscious. During a knockout, the head receives a large force from a punch, and whilst it doesn't always result in a loss of consciousness, in the case, we're going to look at a clean knockout. While it often seems as though the effect is caused by a single well-placed shot, it is usually the result of many quick punches. Each punch creates concussion, and each concussion brings the boxer closer to a state of darkness. Here's how it works. All this mushy mass is floating in a clear, colourless liquid called the cerebrospinal fluid, which protects the brain from coming into contact with the skull. If the punch is good enough, it could cause the brain to slam into the skull from the acceleration caused by the blow and the deceleration caused by the muscles and tendons trying to prevent the head from spinning further. And when the brain slams into the skull, brain cells literally start dying from this physical impact. Your brain has three big parts. There's the left hemisphere, the right hemisphere, and the brainstem at the bottom. You can lose consciousness if both hemispheres are turned off at once, though if only one is affected, the other can pick up some of the slack. You can also lose consciousness if part of the brainstem is not offline. Think about the brain as firm jello. The two hemispheres are heavy, and the brainstem connecting the two hemispheres to the rest of the nervous system is narrow, like the stem of a flower. When the head is moved violently, the brain moves around in the skull, the heaviest part of the brain puts a lot of pressure on the brainstem, which can be twisted and pulled during the blow, as the rest of the brain moves out of place. That twisting and pulling can cause brain circuits to break, or lose their insulation, or get kinked up, and that shuts off parts of the brain. If the part of the brainstem responsible for consciousness is affected, then you'd be knocked out. Imagine it a little bit like a snow globe hitting the inside every time you shake it, except it's not a snow globe, just a brain and skull. But the brain doesn't say it all. Thanks to a little something called electrolyte imbalance. If you're thinking of the electrolytes professional athletes take, you're not wrong. And a bit like the little tablets that you mix into your drinks, it's all down to salt. Every time a fighter receives a blow to a nerve, potassium leaves a cell and calcium rushes in, destabilizing the electrolyte balance while the brain does all it can to keep those levels in balance. With each successive blow, this balance becomes harder and harder to maintain and more and more energy must be spent in the process. When the body reaches the point where the damage outweighs the body's ability to repair itself, the brain shuts down to conserve enough energy to fix the injured neurons at a later point. Brain or not, it's usually the boxer's feet that tell if they're going to be knocked out. If you watch closely, their lack of coordination starts in the feet, which is then mimicked by the hands, and before you know it, they are lying stone cold on the ground. I am currently taking donations in the form of likes and subscribes, and those would be much appreciated.